Hey everybody, this is Hunter from Alton Astrophotography. Just wanted to do a quick update regards to some new information from ZWO Astro Cameras about some new products that are coming along. I just watched Sasha's video from View in Space on this and they added a little bit more details to it and I had some little different thoughts at some of the products that they are going to be debuting here probably tomorrow at the latest conference but we're gonna first start off with something new here now I have seen this before with a different brand from Sharp Star Optics which ZWO is trying to say that they're gonna be having a telescope that has a removable objective lens so you're gonna start off with maybe a 65 millimeter diameter lens APO but you have the option of buying different objectives and be able to unscrew and screw on. So you might have a 65, you might have maybe a 75 to a 96 to maybe a 112, you know, the possibilities are endless. This is something very similar and just, in fact, the other day, Sharp Star Optics actually kind of debuted this known as the Ascar 5 which has interchangeable lenses. So it's kind of like the same similar idea about this, which is a really, really cool thing because instead of buying separate scopes, you know, that adds up in prices very quickly. You want something more for wide field or you want something with some more focal length and some bigger aperture. So why not just have a whole one-stop shop? So all you have to do, if you want to image something, you can literally do it in the same session if you wanted to. You could just unscrew the front of the objective and put a higher focal length in there so you can get a different view or even a different object itself in the same time period of the night. It's a very, very cool initiative that a lot of these companies are beginning to kind of work around, but that's not the biggest thing that I am very curious about. It is this. We all know how great the reviews are from the latest ZWO AM5 mount with the harmonic drives, which is can hold a payload of tw about 28 pounds without a counterweight which is really, really cool. And then if you add a counterweight, you can go up to about 40 or so. I forget the exact number, but they are hinting at a smaller, maybe more affordable harmonic drive mount, maybe called the AM4 or completely something else. I'm very curious about this because one, the AM5 mount is about $2,000. This one might be in competition with some of those Ioptron mounts like I have, the Gem 28. And I'm really curious if this is direct competition to Skywatcher with their recent Star Adventurer GTI. If we're looking about that same kind of price range, but a harmonic drive without the use of a counterweight and be able to hold a larger payload, that is going to be a big competition with Skywatcher then. This is gonna be unveiled probably tomorrow. I'm very excited about this to curiously know what the price range of this is going to be, what is the payload that's going to be, but we'll probably find out a little bit more once we get towards tomorrow. And then there's one more. ZWL is unveiling another camera. Now this camera is a little bit different because it looks like a full frame sensor but there's a secondary sensor just above it. Now that gets me thinking of either two things. One, they're starting to dabble in the potential of having a integrated guide camera inside of your image train so you don't have to have a separate guide scope a separate guide camera and as well as maybe completely eliminating any off-axis guiders especially for those with smith cassegrain telescopes or another thought that i have this could be a high frame rate planetary camera all in one that is cooled as well because I have a little bit of some skeptics about if this happens to be a guide camera that's integrated with this system because one, 
it would be great for people who are doing just regular RGB or using a light pollution filter since you're not going to be losing a lot of sensitivity for those fainter stars. It's narrowband that's going to be the problem here, especially when you start dabbling into 3 nanometers to 5 or 6 nanometer bandpass uh, filters. That cuts down the sensitivity to the stars quite a bit. But unless this sensor here is extremely sensitive that even through those tighter band passes that it can still do the job then that's amazing that saves a lot of cost effectiveness less weight on your imaging train in general and it's an all-in-one so it doesn't matter basically it's like having an off access guider without having the extra camera and all the extra work for it so I'm very interested in if that is going to be the route they are going or if this is a planetary camera that is cooled so you can switch it between if you want to just do normal you know deep sky imaging with your wide full frame sensor and then without having to take the camera apart and put your planetary camera in there you can just flip over to that other sensor and then you're already ready to go all in the same time. So, it's going to be very interesting tomorrow to see what is actually in veil for this. And when it does, I'll have another video for you on that. So, with that said, please, if you like this channel so far, just starting off, please like, subscribe, leave a comment on the video, and see what else you would like for me to cover. So, as always, clear skies, and I'll see you next time.